Hello and welcome to another short video for the 12 Lead ECG I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. In this case study we will be looking at a STEMI equivalent with ST depression in the inferior leads and elevation in lead AVL. Credit for this case study goes to Billy Cunningham and Seth McInnes so our thanks go to them for sharing. The call was to a female in her late 60s found collapsed in the street. She presented as pale and sweaty and looking like someone having an MI. The patient reported feeling unwell with dizziness, but denied any chest pain. The crew went ahead and recorded a 12 lead ECG anyway, as part of the patient assessment. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, the most obvious finding we see from this ECG is the ST depression in the inferior leads of 2, 3 and AVF, and also in the left-sided leads of V4 to V6. And we can see that there. So what's going on? Well, we know that ischemia doesn't localise, so it could be reciprocal to ST elevation elsewhere. But if we check for at least two contiguous leads with ST elevation so that we can call a STEMI, we don't really find that here. The anterior leads have some elevation in them, but we don't quite meet the criteria for calling a STEMI yet. We also have ST elevation in AVL, but when we look at lead one, it is showing ST depression according to the computer, I'll just circle that over there, and is at best isoelectric, so we can't call this a high lateral STEMI either. So could this just be considered a high risk ACS? Well, to understand the relevance of reciprocal ST depression, we need to understand the axis or vector of ST elevation. And to do that, I am just going to focus on the limb leads for now. In the diagram on the right, you can see QRS complexes taken from our ECG and how they relate to the heart's axis in the vertical plane. If we accept that an impulse travelling toward an electrode creates a positive deflection and that one travelling away creates a negative one, then it makes sense that ST elevation in one lead would be seen as reciprocal ST depression in leads opposite to it. This is the reason why we confirm posterior STEMI with leads V7 to V9 when we have ST depression in V1 to V3. In the same way that we don't have direct visualisation of the posterior wall from the standard 12 lead ECG, nor do we have direct visualisation of the high lateral wall, which for most STEMIs from a left circumflex lesion in that area show maximal elevation in the minus 45 to minus 90 degree range. And I've shown that here with the blue shaded area in our diagram. Because we don't have any electrodes looking directly at this area, we use the nearest leads of AVL and 1 instead to see ST elevation in high lateral STEMI. You will now see that this is why high lateral STEMI can be subtle or relatively silent on our 12 lead ECG. You should also be able to see that the ST axis or vector is travelling directly away from our inferior leads, in particular lead 3 and AVF. And this is why we get reciprocal ST depression in these leads. What then if we created a view of the high lateral wall by following the Cabrera format of reversing AVR to create a mirror image in minus AVR and did the same with our inferior leads? By creating minus 3 and minus AVF we now see that we have ST elevation in more than two contiguous leads from AVL in a counterclockwise direction towards AVR. So if we go back to our original 12 lead ECG Although we don't meet STEMI criteria from this, with only ST elevation in lead AVL and not enough in elevation in two contiguous precordial leads, we do have a STEMI equivalent from reciprocal ST depression in the inferior leads. The crew conveyed this patient to the cath lab based on the presentation and permissible guidelines in London, and just before arriving recorded another 12 lead about 20 minutes later. And now we can clearly see that this patient is having an anterior lateral MI with marked ST elevation in V2 to V4, with lead 1 also now elevated in addition to AVL. The patient was found to have an occlusion of the left coronary circulation, with the plan being to stem, but the patient became too unwell and went straight to theatre for bypass surgery. On to some take home points then. Well, we know that ischemia does not localise. In high lateral STEMI, this can be relatively silent on the 12 lead ECG. With ST depression in the inferior leads, consider if it's reciprocal to ST elevation in leads 1 and AVL. An ST elevation in AVL alone, with inferior ST depression, this is a STEMI equivalent and you should be activating the cath lab. And as always, continuous monitoring of our ACS patients is a must.
Now all that's left for me to do is thank Billy and Seth for sharing this case study with us and to thank you all for watching. I hope as always you found this both interesting and helpful. Goodbye for now.